Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. Sign up now for a $20 free bet. Just use the code IFLTV24. Sign up now. Terms and conditions apply. This is Oscar Bevis for IFL TV. Frank, thanks for giving me some of your time. Good to see you. Um, yeah, the first Magnificent Seven was such a success. I guess it's only right that you, uh, you bring it back. Yeah, yeah, it's the, re the return of the Seven. So we've got a, a great night's boxing with some cracking fights on the on it, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it. I mean, so it, it was, I think it was the show of the year in the UK last year, and hopefully this one will, will I'm sure, match it. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of big goings on in boxing at the moment, but just in terms of Nathan Heaney, um, from where he's come from, his dream to win the British title, he must be one of your success stories of the last year, 18 months. Well, I think he's one of his success stories. You know, he, he went out to his last fight, he wasn't going into it as, a, uh, as the favourite, but he boxed like the favourite. He fought extremely well against Denzel, who's a very good fighter, Denzel Bentley, who gave the world champion a real tough fight and uh, I thought could have won that fight. Um, and Nathan went out there and won on merit. He boxed extremely, extremely well and, and obviously got his tactics dead on and showed what a competitor he was. And he actually took a couple of shots in the fight. He got clipped a couple of times and come through it. So I'm thrilled for him. He's one of... He's a... Lovely fella, he's, he's really well supported and uh, he's got a tough fight on his hand. Yeah, I think both of them have had 18 fights and one loss between between them. So it's going to be competitive and uh, maybe for the challenger, he's in a position Nathan was when he fought against uh, Denzel. So as we see, anything can happen. So I can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's a really interesting fight between Nathan and Brad. Um, I know he's, he, he will be tunnel vision for Brad Pauls, but I can't help but kind of lick my lips at the Chris Eubank at Stoke. And I'm sure you were the same listening to that. Yeah, I like that. That's ambition. That's what it's all about. You know, he desperately wanted to fight for the British title against Denzel. Now he's, he's obviously lifted his horizons again and, and wants to move on to bigger and better things. And if we could do a big fight similar to that with a big name in, in front of him, there's no doubt he would sell out Stoke City. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. Um, on Joe Joyce... When I spoke to Joe before this, he said he was enjoying watching that card, but he was watching it with itchy knuckles the, the day of reckoning. Um, and I'm not surprised because I guess if you're to pick a heavyweight who wasn't there that we want to see there, it is Joe Joyce. Well, look, he was the most avoided heavyweight up until his two fights with Zhang. And Zhang done extremely well. And Joe, you know, he's talking about snakes and ladders. And last year was the year of snake for him. But you think just in a year how things turn around he beats Joe Parker now Joe Parker's fighting Zhang off to coming off of two good wins so it's all quite sexy quite entertaining and uh, he has he certainly has the skills and the desire and uh, hopefully he can get himself back on back in there again you know get to the top echelons of the heavyweight division and there's some big fights there for him yeah I mean when you've kind of got people I know he'll try and block out as much noise as possible but it's hard to avoid all of it. A lot of people are saying, look, Joe, time to pack it in. But like you mentioned with Parker, I guess they might have said that after the fight with Joe Joyce and look at him now. So there was, But there was a lot of noise for, for Joe to, to pack it in after that second defeat, did you know? A lot of people did say that. And uh, you know, I heard a lot of people say that. But you know, Zhang's his bogeyman. There's no doubt about that. He was his bogeyman. And as I said prior to those fights, he's the one that they all thought would give Tyson his toughest fight. That was the, not my view. I mean, that's the view that was out there. And now, um, as I say, we, we, look, his next fight, we're going to see what he's got left. If, if you know, They may be right, they may be wrong. That's up to Joe to prove him wrong. Just one more thing on this card. Um, Dennis and Liam up there, but not against each other yet. Um, I know Dev, Dev had to mention it. It's a massive fight, but they both got jobs to do, right? So They've got tough fights. You know, Brad's not, Brad's not showing up to make up the numbers. If they fancy the job and they've, they've, got, they've got quite a good winning mentality up there. And certainly Dennis has. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a brilliant fight. Two Queensbury fighters. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I really am looking forward to it. I think it's going to be very, very exciting. Um, Frank, just kind of reflecting on the Joshua Ngannou press conference. I didn't get to speak to you for, for too long on that day. Um, just looking back, quite a mad few hours that was. It was a mad few hours, but it's exciting and it's a great show and it's a fabulous undercard. You know, I'm really, really looking forward. It's another one I'm looking forward to. You know, 2024 has kicked off in a big way for boxing, certainly for, for the shows that we're involved with. I mean, you know, mega, mega events.
Um, you and Eddie was not something people had on their checklist for the last 12 months, that's for sure. Um, I know you've done a couple of bits, you filmed something, the pair of you with Steve Bunce and the pair of you with Ade as well. Um, can you kind of give us an insight into what kind of was said and what that's going to be like and when it will be released even? I've got no idea, no one tells me anything. I just show up and do the interviews and that was it. What was it like? You know, we, he was asked us, our, he asked us uh, questions and we answered them. You know, both gave our opinions on certain things. Um, you know, the good thing is, at this moment in time, you know, because of the situation and because of the fights that that we, you know, fighters that we respectively represent, we now be able to get some of these shows, these fights together and work together, which is for the benefit of everybody concerned and the benefit, obviously, for the people who are buying tickets or watching it on pay-per-view. Brilliant. Did you see Frank Smith's Instagram caption? No, what is it now? <laughs> It was about making cups of tea, obviously, in reference to things you said to Frank in the past. But I saw you two at dinner, Frank obviously rocking the, the new hairstyle as well. But I saw you two going for a nice cup of tea. I thought, bloody hell, he's only been dealing with us for a couple of fights. He's done his barnet. Um, what do I think of it? What do I think? Look, I've got, I'm a loyal fella. I can't. He tries. He tried very hard to persuade me to try his green tea. I wasn't interested in it. I'm sticking with Andy's. Well, after seeing what it's done to his hair, I would say perhaps leave it alone. Um, Brilliant from Turkey, by the way, to just kind of get on the mic. And I'm not, I don't want to say force the five aside between Greensbury and Matchroom. Um, it kind of felt like it was kind of just shoved straight on. It was, yeah. it was. It, you know, it wasn't something. Did it give you no chance to say no, basically? It wasn't really discussed. I have no, pro you know, I have no problem with it. It wasn't something that we contrived to do or anything. It's there. And, you know, we, we how can either us say no to it? It's got to happen. And, it's, and, I, and actually, facts, I'm really looking forward to it. Have you had any discussions since, I know it's only been a couple of days, of kind of what weight should be looking at, who picks the weights, um, if you're going to, like how things will work logistically between who chooses what with, with you and Eddie? We'll work, we'll work that out between us and we'll be sensible with each other and just make it work. I mean, look, neither of us want to lose, that's for sure. I mean, there's a lot of pride at stake, there's a lot of passion involved and there'll be some good fights there. And there's a wager involved as well. Uh, that uh, you know, we're going to talk about it, but there will be some form of wager, no doubt about that. Pressure's on. As spicy as nothing it is, but we've got to make it even spicier. Pressure's on for them, for them five fighters. Um, on Oscar Del Hoyo, I know he's been quite critical of kind of the Saudi mission and the Saudi involvement. Um, why do you think that? Why? I haven't heard what he said. What has he actually said? It's kind of a bit of a play thing, and that one day they're just going to go. We're kind of done with boxing now. And uh, do you think that's just because he's not involved in, in, in the big stuff at the moment? I, I, I've got no idea what's with Oscar. I mean, you can, you know, uh, that's, that's his view. I don't think that's his view. I think there's a massive commitment to boxing from, from, uh, from His Excellency, from the Riyadh season. They opened the Riyadh season with boxing. What more can you do? They didn't open it up with a pop band or with, you know, opera or another sport they opened it with boxing and since then it's been more and more so you know god bless them and we we move forward keep doing what we're doing and uh you know as for oscar you know that old train looks like it's left left him at the station i don't know are you surprised at the lack of eagerness not just from oscar from certain promoters to want to be involved in this like we saw with the day of reckoning the amount of promotional outfits that were involved Surely there should be a real sense of eagerness for promoters and everyone to want to be involved in what's going on right now. Look, for, for certain fighters who fought on there, they're getting, they're getting great opportunities, making a lot of money, and it's happening. You know, I don't look, what's, for me, I can't look for any of the negatives in it because there aren't any negatives for us. If they're not for other, if they're not for happening for somebody else, that's, what can, that's, I suppose, for really too bad. I mean, what, you know, what, nothing I can do about it. All I care about is what we're doing and what we're doing and what other promoters are involved in it are doing. It's been great for boxing. And, you know, why would you want to tear that down? I'll tell you what, one more thing. It's helped deliver February the 17th. I'm not sure I'll, or, or I will see you before then. Um, but just kind of how you're feeling as it gets closer, perhaps the nerves get, get a little bit more? No, no nerves for me. I've got absolute confidence in Tyson Fury. He's, uh, he's, for me, he's the best heavyweight in the world, and uh, I think he will come away from that fight and proving that point. He believes it, and I certainly believe it. So it does end with Fury Joshua in, in 2024, then. I don't know what what will happen there. You know, the, the, the fighters have commitments. We'll see. What, let's get these fights out of the way first of all. Wall Street memes casino.
I'm fine. And sportsbook. Sign up now for a $20 free bet. Just use the code IFLTV24. Sign up now. Terms and conditions apply.